Rhinelander est une petite ville pittoresque du Wisconsin, réputée pour ses musées et ses parcs nationaux. Au 19e siècle, elle a fait sa marque en tant que capitale du bois et reste aujourd'hui une destination incontournable du centre des États-Unis. Lieu d'évasion privilégié, Rhinelander a une industrie touristique prospère. La ville se trouve dans le comté d'Oneida, dont les nombreux lacs et rivières occupent jusqu'à 10 du territoire. Été comme hiver, les visiteurs sont nombreux à venir s'imprégner de ces beautés. Mais de nombreux curieux viennent à Rhinelander pour d'autres raisons. Selon des rumeurs persistantes, une créature légendaire terrifiante erre dans les forêts de ce secteur depuis plusieurs siècles. La bête, horrible selon ceux qui l'ont aperçue, aurait même déjà été capturée. I think it's out there. It's in the woods. On one of my evening strolls nearby here, as I was walking past the swampy area, I was stopped dead in my tracks. Then it dawned on me that I'm looking at a creature that is very, very unique, if not the only one of its kind. And there are even rumors early on that he ate human flesh. And as a little girl, I'll tell you, I, I seen him. I truly believe that I've seen the hot egg. It's black. It has horns up its back, big, big claws, a horn on its wrist. We do on occasion receive complaints, concerned citizens calling in about the mysterious creature. This object was coming closer, and here's these red eyes. Claws ripped the belly from any beast. It was so scary. Horns running down its back. I mean, this was just this beast coming out of this woodshed. I've been actually searching for the hodag for 40 years. And the hodag came barreling out from the bushes, bit him in half, just like that. Selon la légende, le hodag se cacherait dans les marais, refuge impénétrable. Un lieu sûr qui lui aurait permis d'échapper aux nombreuses poursuites organisées pour tenter de la gripper. There are a lot of books written about the hodag. Most of them are somewhat historical about the hoed egg and the first discovery of the hoed egg, but all of them are going to have a chapter about modern sightings of the hoed egg. Uh, and the hoed egg has been showing up in the media in various places. There's a kids show that had a, a whole episode based upon the hoed egg. Selon les témoignages, la créature aurait une tête hideuse, décrite comme un croisement entre celle d'une grenouille et d'un éléphant. Ses pattes seraient larges et courtes et pourvues d'énormes griffes. Son dos serait semblable à celui d'un dinosaure et serait muni d'une longue queue armée de redoutables épines. Les observations à propos de sa couleur divergent, allant du noir au vert. Un certain Gene Shepard aurait réussi à prendre une photo de la bête à la fin du 19e siècle. Mais le cliché est flou. En 1896, supposedly, it's been said that Gene Shepard captured the hodag. And how did he capture it? He had a 10-foot bamboo pole. He had a huge sponge soaked in chloroform. And he managed to find out when the hodag was in its cave and worked his way up there with that sponge and that chloroform and got the hodag to go to sleep. Then he brought the townspeople out there, brought it back to his house and showed it for years and years, brought it around to county fairs and made money showing the hodag. Gene Shepard lived in Rhinelander. The climactic area, the geography, the geology of the area all lends itself to a creature such as the hodag thriving and existing here. Oh, uh, he is seven feet long. Seven and a half feet long, we're reported about 12 to 1500 pounds so it's it's not something you could hide in the woods but his camouflage has been they, they say very well qu'est-ce que Gene Shepard a découvert dans la forêt en ce jour fatidique l'animal n'a jamais été capturé à nouveau et personne n'a confirmé l'avoir revu mais une mystérieuse légende a pris naissance une légende dont les traces sont visibles partout à Rhinelander que ce soit dans les livres sur les cartes postales ou au musée
There have been people who have come forward with tales that can only, in my opinion, be interpreted as sightings of the Hodank. So yes, we've had young people and we've had older people who will swear that what they heard and saw in the woods was absolutely had to be a Hodank. <laughs> Lorsqu'il visite Rhinelander, de nombreux touristes se laissent tenter par une excursion sur la rivière Wisconsin. Autrefois maire de la ville, Jerry Scheidel est aujourd'hui capitaine d'un bateau de croisière, le Wilderness Queen. Mettant le cap en direction des rapides, Jerry commente la visite. Pendant qu'il raconte l'histoire de la région, il en profite pour révéler quelques faits divers marquants. Hodag, par exemple. Jerry prend plaisir à initier les visiteurs à cette légende née dans les récits du célèbre bûcheron Gene Shepard. Gene Shepard was a man who discovered a hoed egg and he found that in the Great McNaught Swamp, just north of Rhinelander. Now, the hoed egg was uh, something that had never been found before. Selon Gene Shepard, la bête aurait surgi devant lui en 1893 dans le marais McNaughton, au nord de la ville. Au retour, il dessine la créature puis son histoire est publiée dans le journal local. Trois ans plus tard, il retourne dans le marais avec plusieurs hommes afin de capturer la bête. It was a unique creature and Gene Shepard decided he needed to make some money off of this creature he found and so he started to show it at the county fairs right around the turn of the century from 1800s to the 1900s. And he showed it there very successfully and actually made himself a quite a few dollars doing it. However, Gene Shepard was a braggart, a drunkard, a womanizer, and he died broke and divorced. And he just didn't know how to handle his money. Jusqu'à sa mort, Shepard fait le récit de sa rencontre avec le Hodag chaque fois qu'il en a l'occasion. L'histoire est relayée aujourd'hui par Jerry, notamment auprès des touristes, avec sa propre version des faits. Matthew, are you from the area? Are you from here? No? Stevens Point. Stevens Point, huh? Do you know about the hoed egg? Yeah. Oh, do you like the hoed egg? Yeah. You... Yeah. yeah. Jerry tente de convaincre son auditoire que la créature existe vraiment. Il raconte même qu'un jour, comme Gene Shepard, il a eu la frousse de sa vie en se retrouvant nez à nez avec le monstre. Now, I mentioned back at that island that this could be the area where a hoed egg would be sighted. Well, it's possible. It has water, and a hoed egg does enjoy some clams and mud turtles and a few water snakes. But it likes a nice swampy area. And I have to tell you, one day I was out walking in an area that was fairly swampy. And as I'm walking through the woods, I'm enjoying the beautiful evening. It's going to be an evening just like today. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the peace and quiet of the walk. And all of a sudden, I am stopped short in my tracks, like dead in my tracks, because a smell assaulted my nose. A stink that could only be described as so strong it would drive a skunk off a gut pile. I mean, it was bad. I stopped. I moved forward quietly and carefully. And upon rounding a bend, I could see this, this apparition coming through the woods because it was a little bit foggy that night. And here it comes walking down the pathway. And as it gets closer, I notice that its eyes were glowing green, that its nose was flaring red. And as it appeared closer and closer, all of a sudden with cat-like agility, it sprung upon a log right in front of me. And that's when I saw a huge, huge claws. Claws so big it could rip the belly out of the biggest beast. That's when I saw the horns running down its back, ending in a fistful of those needle sharp points at the end of its tail. And that's when I very carefully, trying not to move at all for fear of what might happen, I 
I reached into my top pocket and I took out my iPhone and I commenced to take as quiet a picture as I possibly could and then without making any sudden movements I very carefully backed away from that critter and hightailed it out of there. Jerry et Jean ne sont pas les seuls à prétendre avoir été en contact avec le Hodag. Daisy en a aussi fait l'expérience dans une forêt près de Rhinelander. I enjoy walking in the woods. It's a sense of quietness, I don't know. I, I like to see what all can pop out when you're just sitting there. Well, it was uh, nice and sunny out. Uh, it was around dusky, though. I got done with supper and I didn't have any homework, so I decided to go down there and sat up in my favorite tree like I do any other time. And I saw him. He was black, very black. Uh, lots of spikes going. He had two on his head and then at least 15 going down to his back and up. Uh, quite a few on his tail. The claws were, I don't know, about probably about that big on each paw. He had about three of them and then one like on his back there. Uh, it was scary. So like I kind of froze up and then I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I know that there were have been a few bears down there. So when I hopped out of the tree, I I wanted to make sure that what I saw was correct, and when I went down there, it, it was definitely a hot egg, flaring red nostrils, the stench was horrendous, and uh, it, I, I knew what I saw and I ran. At night, I, I don't go out, I know that's when he likes to go out to hunt, so I, I just keep away from the swamps at night. I wrote about the Hodag because I'm from here, because it was a way of incorporating stories that I know. I am a Hodag. My family goes back to 1890 census in Rhinelander. And a Hodag's been part of my life all my life. My parents were Hodags. They went to high school here. My grandparents. I use everything. I take the bare bones of the Hodag story and add things that could be true. We have a story about the uh, funeral of Shorty Matusak. There's not too many stories known, true stories, about uh, what happened to some of the victims of the Hodag, but Shorty Matusak was a victim of the Hodag. He was a fireman on the train, and the train used to stop at a little town called Roosevelt on the north side of the Moon's Chain. So the red light was out, the train stopped, Shorty Matusak was the fireman. There was nobody at the station. It was a dark and foggy night. He left the train, which was his mistake. He looked to see what was going on up and down the tracks, and the hodag came barreling out from the bushes, bit him in half, just like that. Now, the only thing about this is he had to be buried. And of course, Father Himmelsbach had to come and say, okay, we can have an open casket, but it's not often that you have the bottom of the casket open. Of course, that's all that was left to a shorty was the bottom. So they put a, they tacked a little uh, satin curtain at the top so you couldn't lump in there. And he wore new shoes and everybody came to the funeral of Shorty Matusek, bitten in half by the hodag. <laughs> It's, it's a family secret. We can't really tell much um, that, um, you know, where to see the hot egg. So, you know, some people think maybe it's a hoax, but it's a family secret. It would be like telling where your favorite blueberry patch was. You just never, never talk about that. Rod Umloft est un artiste de Rhinelander qui peint le hot egg depuis toujours. Il se rappelle l'étrange expérience à la source de son inspiration. Our family would come up to northern Wisconsin. We'd have campfires at night. We'd be camping or 
um, staying in the cabin. And my uncle, he loved to tell ghost stories. So, I mean, he was the type that'd tell us a I mean, really scary story and then take us to a cemetery and make us walk, walk through the cemetery. So there's this noise in, or in the woods and this object was coming closer and here's these red eyes. And as it got closer, it's making these noises and it, it smelled bad, not like a skunk, but, and there's these horns out of its back and it's making these really strange noises and we got really scared. But we thought kind of was like, I mean, Uncle Dick's always playing these jokes. Um, but we could tell he was not expecting this. And uh, he picked up a rock and threw it at this creature. And, you know, I th thinking back, I think those red eyes were just a reflection from the, the campfire. But that image in my mind, you know, I was you know pretty young, six, seven. But that was my first experience with the whole day. About 10 years ago, I was snowshoeing. And in the evening, I saw a group of, of hodags, not, not close, but they were, were there's there a lot of dead trees. And I was up on a hill, so I was just like, unbelievable. Because, you know, I'd heard stories about the hodag, but people would, you know, just talk about one. But here there's, you know, a, a group of them. And I wasn't sure whether to call it a herd of hodags or a, a pack of hodags. Um, but that was about 10 years ago. So of course, I had to, had to paint that. Enfant, Rod faisait des cauchemars à propos du hodag. Il soupçonnait pourtant que son imagination lui jouait des tours ou que son oncle avait inventé cette plaisanterie pour lui faire peur. Plus tard, son expérience troublante avec le hodag l'incite à y croire et l'inspire dans ses œuvres. Même s'il le dessine en vert la plupart du temps, en admettant que ce choix est purement artistique, Rod affirme que l'animal qu'il a vu dans la forêt était plutôt foncé ce que Gene Shepard prétendait aussi. Mais qu'est-ce que l'artiste a vu au juste dans les forêts de Rhinelander Comme le veut la coutume ici, lui seul le sait. centré autour du Hodag. Mais les sceptiques sont nombreux à s'être fait une idée sur cette légende et sur l'histoire racontée par Gene Shepard. Ce qu'ils aimeraient comprendre, c'est pourquoi tant de gens cherchent encore à rencontrer l'animal. Well, what I found in all my time up here is uh, there's really two types of people when it comes to believing in the Hodag. Uh, there are those that just want to believe. Uh, and there's absolutely no harm in that. It's fun. It's 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 a it's a wonderful creature to you know <laughs> share stories about. Uh, and then the second type are the people that are just trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Well, I'm a skeptic, so I don't think there's any proof that's out there. It's all anecdotes. If you start looking at proof, if you start looking at the scientific possibility of a hodag being there, uh, you're you're not going to have that much to stand on. If you think about it, the kind of one of the big mistakes with the hodag, the story as far as like the reality of it, is that the story is that there was always just one hodag. And so now for there to still be a hodag running around out there today, there would have to be an animal that is about 170 years old that is still out there running around. If you were to look at just simply the scientific evidence of what it takes for a species to survive and the fact that we don't have any photos of them, uh, you can add up things like uh, it's a large creature, it would consume an incredible amount of calories to survive. Probably one of the most famous stories that Gene Shepard came up with when he first was talking about the Hoda was the stench of the creature. Well, in the fall, uh, we have hunters that are just completely filling all of the land of, of around Rhinelander that are hunting. And although, you know, maybe a hodag can hide under a bush, 
uh, to be concealed, but if it stinks so much that you can smell it within 100 yards, you'd think sooner or later somebody would say, hmm, I smelled a hodag. I'm going to track it down. I'm going to take a picture of it. And yet I don't see any pictures or what there are. They're stage shots. Une autre question que beaucoup se posent, c'est que si le hodag existe vraiment, comment se fait-il qu'aucune photo récente n'en fasse la preuve, alors que tout le monde possède un cellulaire muni de cette fonction Il y a bien celle que Jerry a prise quand il était dans les bois tout récemment. Au fait, qu'est-il advenu de cette photo Alas, upon getting home, my battery was dead. While I'm searching for the charger, my cats decided to use the phone as a kickball, and they shattered it beyond belief. But I did see it. It is real. And I only had one. You'll find some pictures that Gene Shepard uh, himself took of the hodag, of townspeople standing around attacking the hodag and so on. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty stiff looking creature. It seems to be uh, taxidermically perfectly sitting there. So I, I'm not sure how much you really want to take this seriously. He was the prankster. He was the father of this great prank. And so I doubt whether he would have admitted exactly that it was a hoax. But certainly there have been a number of stories that have uncovered it, you know. The more you look into Gene Shepard, the more you're going to find that this guy loved to play pranks. He was a jokester. He, he was, you know, a remarkable man. He was a, a very good surveyor of timber, uh, a, a great talker and a great uh, storyteller. But he's also one of these people, and we all know one of these people, where you can't tell if half the stories that they're telling are really true. Gene Shepard was a prankster, a jokester, and he liked to brag, but he also liked to promote the area he was in. En insistant un peu, les gens finissent par admettre candidement que Gene Shepard a probablement inventé cette histoire de toute pièce, dans l'espoir de revitaliser l'économie locale chancelante causée à l'époque par la déforestation. Fin renard, Gene Shepard a mis sur pied ce canular lors d'une fête foraine à Rhinelander. Aujourd'hui, il est perçu comme un visionnaire qui a eu l'idée géniale de miser sur le tourisme pour remplacer la forêt dont l'exploitation était à ce moment la principale source de revenus de la région. Gene Shepard ne se doutait sûrement pas alors de l'ampleur du monstre qu'il était en train de créer. He came upon the idea of trying to pull a great joke, a big joke. He would always dabble in little ones, but he wanted to pull a giant one. And so he came up with this creature. And he designed this creature in his head. Then he had somebody actually build a creature for him out of cow horns and cow hides. And he got a very strong smelling uh, liquid from the rendering plant in the area. And he ended up creating this monster and then showing it to people, telling them it was the real thing, that he had found it out in the woods, that it harkens back to prehistoric times. And it's been on the planet for many, many, many years and is very ferocious. The Smithsonian Institute actually sent people up here, and that is when Gene Shepard had to fess up that the whole thing was indeed a joke. I think that absolutely Gene Shepard is probably, um, you know, one of the first ambassadors that we've had for the Rhinelander community. He kind of put us on the map, and he, um, I don't think he probably ever intended to, and I think he probably thought this is going to be hilarious when my friends hear this story about what um, I've just discovered. But he definitely has helped put Rhinelander on the map and has made a name for our community. Au premier abord, Rhinelander ressemble à toutes les petites villes du Midwest américain. Mais on ne met pas longtemps à remarquer son caractère très original, marqué par la présence, visible partout, d'une légende mythologique toujours bien vivante. As you drive through the city of Rhinelander, you will see pictures of the whole egg almost everywhere you go to include uh, little statues of, of the Hodag itself. The Hodag has 
been associated with the name of Rhinelander for over 100 years now, and from my experience, it's sort of gone up and down in terms of its popularity. Uh, there was a period 15, 20 years ago where there was a controversy over whether they should paint the Hodag on one of the water towers because, you know, we don't want to have this town become known for nothing but the Hodag. Since then, they've turned around and, you know, the Hodag, there's a massive sculpture of it right in front of the Chamber of Commerce and it's on the water towers and people are proud of it. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely a draw to the tourists because it's, it's the lore of a bygone era, of the, the lumberjack area. Uh, it's you know, only a hundred years ago or so uh, that really was what this town in most of northern Wisconsin was built on. People come here to Rhinelander, and when they come here to Rhinelander, one of the first things they do is stop at the Chamber of Commerce, and they take a picture of themselves in front of the giant hodag, which is one of the main attractions for Rhinelander and does bring people here because they want to see what is this, this myth of the hodag, this story of the hodag. How did it develop? Where was it kept? How was it captured? And of course, they need to have a picture of it. The Hodag is really one of the things that Rhinelander is known for. A lot of people from Wisconsin, if you say, oh, I'm from Rhinelander or I live in Rhinelander, they'll say, oh, home of the Hodag, we know the Hodag. We've kind of embraced the idea we are the Rhinelander Hodags. That's our high school mascot. We have the Hodag Country Festival, which is one of the largest country festivals in the state. Bringing the Hodag into everything else kind of helps keep the legend going. It's very hard to put a date when you're from here, on when you heard about the Hodag, it's around you all the time. It's on every sign, it's on your tire dealership, it's on a restaurant, it's on everything. So it sort of begins when you begin. Uh, one of the big tourist attractions we have here, of course, is our Hodag Country Music Festival, where we bring in a lot of great country music stars. And then we've got other festivals that take place, uh, Potato Fest, uh, downtown events taking place, art fair. These are all things that take place outdoors because we have such a beautiful area to, to visit. And now we're gonna go over to Pioneer Park, which contains the Logging Museum. And in the Logging Museum, there are artifacts and there's equipment that was used in the early days of logging up here in uh, northern Wisconsin and specifically in the Rhinelander area. The county fair and the Hodag uh, share a history, and here we are in uh, 2013, and the Hodag is back at the county fair. Welcome, welcome to the world famous Hodag Exposition. And it's a popular show at the county fair. So full circle, 110 years, 120 years later, the Hodag's back in town. Who's here to see the Hodag? Yeah! All right. Le canular de Jean Shepard a pris toute son ampleur dans les foires rurales organisées à l'époque dans les villages de campagne. C'est là que Jean exposait sa fausse créature à la vue des badauds. Jerry a eu l'idée de recréer aujourd'hui cette exhibition dans une comédie burlesque qu'il présente parfois devant un auditoire intime au musée de Rhinelander. 
When Jerry first came up with his sketch, or his actually a reenactment of Gene Shepard talking about the hodag at the original Oneida County Fair, uh, he performed that at the latest Oneida County Fair one year ago, and it was a smash hit. If we were to look at a hodag's heart, it would be black. That's how evil and sinister this creature is. People just love the performance. They love the thrill of, the, of the, you know, we're going to see a hodag. Uh, Jerry is a great actor, and he really knows quite a bit about Gene Shepard, and he's, I think he's captured sort of the showmanship, the P.T. Barnum quality uh, of Gene Shepard. So, you know, people loved the show. They were flocking. In fact, uh, I think for their final performance of it, they had a couple hundred people that they didn't even fit into the tent where they were performing it. They had to open the flaps. <laughs> During the reenactment, we have the carnival barker who's out there trying to sell a particular product. In this case, Hodag Magic Elixir Water. Madam, one bottle of Hodag Magic Elixir Water for your husband, and you'll have a new boost in the boudoir. Yeah. I'll take one of those. <laughs> And then we segue right into a little bit of a story about how the hoed egg was discovered and a little bit of a description of the hoed egg in a humorous manner. Jerry's show was um, very interesting. I've never really seen anything like that. Oh, that's just normal. Normal. Okay. A little help here. And I don't know, it was kind of strange at points. <laughs> so I think people loved it because it was, you know, a touch of old time medicine show history. Uh, and, and, you know, in a, to an extent, everybody just can't wait to go into the tent to see the hodag. On a carnival sideshow basis, if you've ever seen movies about the old uh, circuses and the old fairs around the country, they always had the sideshows. They always had these unique things, the, the bearded ladies, the tall and the thin, and the, the skinny and the short, and the, the, all of these different sideshows that nobody believed for a minute, but they were always fun to listen to the barkers out there talking about it. And then it was always fun to go in knowing full well you were probably going to get ripped off. Claws and our lunches. But there's hoed eggs here in town, too. Why, this morning, someone took my eyeglasses. I think it was a hoed egg. The Rhinelander <laughs> area is... A few years ago, we used the hoed egg hunt for a marketing campaign, and Chris Drees was one of our hoed egg hunters, and we did television commercials based on the different places that you can find the hoed egg. The hoed egg is very well known for stealing golf balls, for example. Um, and so we went hunting for the hoed egg on the golf course. The hoed egg also loves fresh fish, especially fish from the end of your fishing line. So if, if that big one ever gets away, it's not really that the big fish got away. The hodag is, you know, out for a swim and, and took it from you. Chris will definitely take you out hodag hunting and he's probably one of the, the expert hodag hunters we have in the area. And the fun thing about it is if you can get a hold of him and he happens to be free, there will be no charge and he will take you to those places in the in the woods, in the water, around town where the hodag is, is best known to be spotted and you have the best chance of finding him. There's never been a confirmed sighting of the hodag. Uh, only, um, you know, people rumors we have up in the north. So when I came north uh, to northern Wisconsin, I was intrigued, as many other people have been. And I started uh, doing some research. Uh, you know, uh, camouflage is, is very good, apparently, as, as we can see by the, uh, the, the hodags we have locally. Uh, the, the, the greens and and the dark shadows uh, mimic our forest very well. He may right be right behind you, and you wouldn't know. Uh, his scent is, is much stronger than any dog. Uh, it's reported, so when you look for the hoed egg, you have to wash your hands very carefully, very, very carefully, and you have to take a breath mint, because they will smell your breath of a human well over a mile away. So that's probably one of the reasons no one actually has seen the hoed egg.
Now, this is very uh, good hodag country. And we're also going into a swamp area, which uh, most people don't like swamps. So the creatures that live in the swamps are somewhat protected uh, from people who are looking for them. You have to look in unusual places for the hodag. Uh, this was made, and the stick is broken as you can see, this was made by something, you know, whether it was a hodag or uh, dug by a bear, uh, but it was dug for a reason. This is very important because they may have been here looking for roots. I do not think we should do any actual hunt for the hoed egg because, you know, if you get out in the woods, there might be, uh, you know, there might be real animals out there. You know, maybe there'd be a bear or some mosquitoes or something like that. And so, you know, I just think it would be more trouble than it's worth out there looking. But sometimes, you know, if guests want to hunt down a t-shirt with a hoed egg on it or a coffee cup, you know, something like that, like a hoed egg souvenir, I will tell them where to go because uh, they do sell those at a few places in town and they will go uh, hunt those on down and they are successful every time in that hunt. I would say that there absolutely is a tie um, economically between the hodag and tourism because even for people who Rhinelander may not be their final destination, that means still they might grab lunch. They're still going to try and take home a hodag uh, souvenir with them and, and say that they saw the hodag and get their picture taken. Gene Shepard made a fair amount of money. There was one weekend where he actually, at a dime apiece, brought in $500. Now $500, even today, it's a nice little chunk of change. Back then, it was quite a lot of money. The whole thing you can find on keychains, um, bumper stickers. I, I got a little snow globe with the hodag on a it. A snow globe. Anybody who has any kind of business acumen at all uses the hodag to promote their business. We have sweatshirts, we have t-shirts, we have, of course, we're in Wisconsin, so we have beer mugs, we have children's stories, so we have a whole line of merchandise called Happy the Hodag that was created by a woman who originally is from Rhinelander, and so Happy's the more children-friendly uh, version of the Hodag. Window clings, bumper stickers, postcards, you name it. If we can put a Hodag on it, we will try. Gene Shepard discovered a very evil, sinister, ferocious animal that just stunk to high heaven. Over the years, in order to adapt and adopt a mascot to the current times, it had to be a little more friendly. And the school, the, the high school, Rhinelander High School, made it the mascot. And that was the beginning of a lot of changes with the hodag, because the hodag was a real monster before that. Uh, you wanted to scare people with the hodag. But after that, after the school adopted it, it became, well, it ate white bulldogs instead of human flesh. And only on Sundays did it eat the white bulldogs. So it was cleaned up a lot. And there's a story about how the black hodag of the North became green. It's a simple story. The Rhinelander High School had green football uniforms. They repainted the hodag. It was a terrible thing for the poor beast. Growing up here in Rhinelander, uh, the hodag was always part of our family. Uh, and we are all very proud of it. It's, it's grown and grown the support for the Hodig. It's just been wonderful. So it turned from black to green and from ferocious and evil to a little more likable. Hodag n'est pas la seule créature mystérieuse à être née des légendes de bûcherons. Il y a aussi le Jersey Devil, une bête décrite comme un croisement entre un kangourou, une chauve-souris et une chèvre. Le jackalope, mi-lapin, mi-antilope, a aussi beaucoup fait parler de lui. Mais le hodag, seule créature à avoir été soi-disant capturée par un courageux bûcheron, est sans doute celle qui a le plus longtemps marqué les mémoires. 
We do um, get asked quite frequently if people were gonna go out and if they were gonna look um, where they might uh, take the kids and what kind of fun things they could do while looking for the hodag. We've been coming up here for years yes. trying to find one. Yeah. Yes, we have not seen it. We've been hunting for them. Yeah. yeah. I've also actually seen the hodag used as a parental tool in that they will tell their children, you know, you might want to watch out and behave and stay in the tent if they're camping tonight because the hodag could potentially, you know, sneak out of the woods or climb out of the lake. And it's always great when kids' eyes get really large and they hear just what might happen when they don't listen to mom and dad. Qu'ils y croient encore ou non, les habitants et visiteurs de Rhinelander s'entendent pour dire que l'histoire du Hodag a laissé en héritage une légende extraordinaire qui donne à cette ville du fin fond du Wisconsin un charme unique. People wonder how it is that the Hodag is alive after over a hundred years. Well, it's got several reasons. The main one being it is a unique creature. There are no other mascots that look like the Hodag, that exist like the Hodag. There are no other creatures that have a myth and a story built up around them over time. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger. USA Today had a contest where you could uh, vote online. In Wisconsin, we were considered the most unique mascot in the, the state. So it's an absolutely wonderful uh, bit of lore and a great, uh, great name of a creature that a lot of people have tapped into uh, and have carried on with the myth. The mystery of the Hodag is something that is just a lot of fun and it's something unique and it's not something that anybody else can say that they have. And so um, whether you believe or don't believe, it's a little bit like Santa Claus. I think, you know, kids will always believe in Santa Claus until they're told differently. So um, we, we treat the Hodag sort of the same way. The Hodag like gives us more pep. I mean, makes, this makes the city a cooler. I don't know. I I'm trying to explain this. It, it brings recognition to to the town of Rhinelander. Plus, then we can make T-shirts about it and sell it. I think it's a great initial hook. I think people really kind of get into it. I think that they they come here, they enjoy it here, they have a great time, and the fact that there is no hot egg at the end of the day really doesn't matter. It's as real as, as you want to make it, and kids love it. I mean, we have storybooks about it. Um, they did a Scooby-Doo episode about it. So in, in Rylander Hearts, it, it is real. It's real to all of us. Over the years, because we have mellowed the image of the Hodeg down so nicely, uh, it's just a more lovable, more mellow, more interesting creature to adopt and to like. And so people have, they've taken to it. If you want to believe, you'll believe, ultimately. Uh, it's fun, it's, it's the whole mystique behind uh, the creature, the hodag, the lore of uh, the 19th century lumbermen, and if you want to believe, you're gonna believe it. <laughs>